we next looked at kinetics in three dimensions. And we had a few basic equations that, that e these universal equations. So we, we know always that the sum of all the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And that, of course, holds in three dimensions. But we need to, to add this one, the sum of all the couples. And remember, these are these R cross F forces um, given by M is equal to the time derivative of the angular momentum here. And we could define this angular momentum also this way, where the angular momentum is equal to I omega. Omega is the angular velocity. And in this case, we, we found that I has to be a tensor. It's no longer a scalar. So I is a tensor. And remember, a tensor looks like this. It's, a th in this case, a three-dimensional, a three-by-three three matrix with nine values. And so this tensor is applied to the vector and gives you a vector which is potentially in a different direction. We also had this equation that could calculate the angular momentum about a point. Um, so we wrote this down, and this was quite useful. So the angular momentum about some point that's not at the mass center, so g is the mass center, um, is really just this r, where r is the vector between this point and the mass center, crossed with the mass times the um, velocity of the center of mass plus the angular momentum at the mass center. So this was the basics for kinetics in three dimensions. After this, we, st we wrote down the uh, Euler's equations of motion. So let's get those. And here we go. So here's Euler's equations of motion. And remember that the um, Euler's equations of motion describe motion of a rigid body about its center of mass. And these equations are somewhat the culmination of this course because we, we set out to explain the, the motion of a body. And here it is, we've got um, two sets of equations, really, the Euler's equations and then the F equals MA equations, which describe the center of mass motion. And these e equations completely describe the motion of any rigid body in, in three dimensions moving through space. So there's, there's two different ways of writing this. Um, the first one I've written here on the top um, is the kind of the vector form, and the second one is breaks it down into components. <coughs> um, here, what we've got is the in, in the fixed frame, we write the couples of the moments here, and that's equal to the time derivative of the angular momentum as measured in the rotating frame. We add that into uh, omega. This big omega is the the rotating the rate at which the rotating frame rotates with respect to the fixed frame, and then we, we cross that with the angular momentum in the fixed frame. So that's one way of writing it, and the Euler's equations are, are when you break this out um, by components and write each component. And so that's what we've got here. Um, I's, let's see, I sub x's, y and z are, are the principal components of the moment of inertia tensor, and then you can see the angular velocity, the time derivative of the angular velocity here, um, and so on. And then these, at the bottom here, let me see, scroll up a bit, we've got the basic F equals MA equations, which describe the center of mass motion. So if we have some rigid body in three dimensions, so it's going through space, moving, rotating around its um, some axes in space. Then we can completely describe the motion of this body with with these equations. And so there's a set; these three just describe the center of mass motion, and that's really the F equals m a that'll tell you the center of mass motion. Um, and then these other three, Euler's equations of motion, describe the motion of the body about its mass center. So in this case, it's just rotating, and, and we could get that out of there. So, so these six equations completely describe the motion of a three-dimensional rigid body moving through space.